on your heart. If you love something, someone, somewhere. I love my wife, Terry. She's smart, sexy, sensible, and not very strong enough to steal the bed sheets. <laughs> that said, when it comes to romance, in husband she has chosen unwisely. For my heart, according to medical professionals, is two sizes too small. That's why, in the season of amore, I will not mush and gush over my favorite person. Instead, I'll share with you three things I love about one of my favorite places. Madam Chair, fellow Toastmasters, who knows where in the world Barcelona is? It's in the country of? Spain. Spain. Yes. And I knew that. I knew that Spain was part of the Iberian Peninsula that juts out into the Atlantic and the Mediterranean. But I never really paid attention to where specifically Barcelona was in Spain. Turns out it's on the eastern coast. And that smidge of geography is important because it reminds us that in Barcelona, there is a wonderful seaside city. It has breathtaking views of the Mediterranean. Beautiful beaches refurbished for the 92 Olympics and plenty of fish in the sea. And in frying pans, dinner plates and bellies abound. Barcelona metaphorically and literally kills seafood. But more importantly, it is the relationship that the history and culture of Barcelona has with its neighboring sea. For example, in the Middle Ages, the Mediterranean was popping. Barcelona boomed. Then, in the late 1400s, Barcelona became a backwater as trade winds shifted to the Atlantic and the Americas. This 200-foot monstrosity, the Columbus Monument, exemplifies this dynamic. It reminds us that it was in Barcelona that Columbus, Christopher Columbus, met with his benefactors, Queen Isabella and King Ferdinand when he returned from the New World. That event is part of a series of events that led to a centuries-long economic decline but that didn't stop them from recording it in the nautical legacy of their country. Now, the second thing I love about Barcelona is its art. The Picasso Museum has several of his abstract cubism works that he's famous for. But Barcelona is where Pablo grew up. It's where he went to art school. It's where he spent his formative years. As such, the museum is dominated with his early work, his conventional work, when he was still coloring between the lines. And then there's the surreal Salvador Dali. A short train trip just outside Barcelona city limits will take you to Figueres, Dali's hometown. Also, now that was the quintessential collection of his works, but also you can go to Casa Dali, a former residence in the nearby town of Cacuex. But the art of Barcelona just doesn't hang on walls, it also is the walls. Barcelona is a mecca for architecture. Take the Catalan Palace of Music, for example. The exterior is very functional except for one facade that's tricky to see, but the interior just might be one of Europe's most precious spaces. And when you step outside, you're transported hundreds of years into the past. You're in old Barcelona, which is a medieval maze of narrow cobblestone, crooked streets lined with pointy, stony, gothic buildings. A wonderful place to wander around, get lost, eat, drink, shop, Wait for shoppers, be merry. Now there once was a wall that contained old Barcelona. And when that wall was torn down, industrial revolution money flooded out into the adjacent undeveloped area to create a shampoo. Known for its distinctive grid street patterns, wide boulevards, and modernista architecture. Modernista is known for its curvilinear forms that look like melted ice cream. Creative materials like glass, better than stucco, colored tile, and wrought iron, as well as naturalistic elements. The master of modern Easter was Antonio Gaudi, and he was over the top Gaudi, but he was a proficient architect designing parks, mansions, apartment complexes, housing developments, and the Sagra Familia. Perhaps the world's most impressive church, and it won't even be done till 2026. I love how it combines hard with soft forms, jagged edges, luscious curves, the classical and the new. Columns just aren't columns, they're tree trunks with branches. And there's more light lit into this cathedral than others of its type because of the use of modern structural techniques, allowing for more stained glass and less stone. Now the third thing I love about Barcelona, though, is its food. And it begins with markets. 
The La Boqueria Market in central Barcelona is where I started my expedition of Barcelona. I love markets because they're visually interesting, tasty places to find fresh, affordable food, and they stretch our language skills as well. My wife and I, we had to wait about 10 minutes in a busy market aisle before two spots opened up at this popular eatery at the market. But when they did, I put 40 euro on the table and I said, I held them into a bank machine. Make us happy. This is all the money I have. And we were made happy. Mind you, some of the things we put in our mouths that day, a little unorthodox. We had to apply the land and Rome rule to Barcelona before things were fine. Barcelona capital is the Catalan region of northeast Spain, a fiercely independent nation without a state. Reminds me of Quebec. In fact, people speak two languages there, Spanish and Catalan. The cuisine is ham dominant. You'll find ham walls dripping and oozing and ham ceilings. Oxtail stew is a staple, as is payola. Lots of international fare as well. We found restaurants from Argentina, France, Italy, North Africa, and a Japanese sushi joint with a rooftop view. That's a bullfighting arena. Now, bullfighting's been banned since 77, but it didn't stop them from filling their stadium full of shops, bars, and restaurants. But in the early evening, you'll be hard pressed to find any restaurants open. That's because people are walking off their afternoon siesta with something called a pasio, the Spanish word for stroll. The La Ramblas Boulevard, a non pedestrian boulevard, is ground zero for Pasio. And all this walking means you need to use tapas strategically. Tapas is small portions of food served in bars. So you go to such an establishment, order a beverage, and you'll likely get some complimentary food. But if you don't, you can order tapas in a wide variety of shapes and sizes. Now, that's a great way to curb your appetite until restaurants open up in the later evening. But you can progressively tapas as well. That's where you go to one place, order some tapas, pack up, go to another, do the same and same and same until you're so full you need to, wait for it, tapas out. <laughs> Madam Chair, ladies and gentlemen, I share with you three things I love about Barcelona. It's a seaside city with artistic flair and a great place to eat. My heart might be two sizes too small, but it's got more than enough room to love Barcelona. Madam Chair.